Remote control is a huge part of digital mixing for most people. Today, we're looking at the Copilot app from Behringer that goes along with their wing console coming up next. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss another episode. Like, comment, and share this video so we can make more of them. And thanks to these folks for making DC Sound App possible. Join us at the links below. In this video, we're looking at the Copilot Wing App version 1.4, which is the current public release available on the Apple Store at the time of filming. Wing Copilot, as well as the Wing Q Personal Monitor Mix app are also available on the Google Play Store for Android. The Wing I'm using is on firmware version 1.10.1 at the moment. I'm sure there will be updates to both in the future, and we will look at those as they are available. It was back in spring of last year when I had the app on this iPad last, so let's download it again and go through the setup process together here. It is a free download. You can search for Wing Copilot and it should come right up. It's only 84 megabytes right now, so not a huge storage hog, which I definitely appreciate. Now I've already got my Wing on the network and we can go to the setup page on the Wing and the remote tab and you'll see I'm using DHCP to assign an IP address on my home network and that address is 10.0.1.31. The console is connected to a simple switch here under my desk with an Apple Airport Express handling DHCP and the Wi-Fi side of things. I'll note here that I'm also using Dante in the expansion card slot of the Wing right now to send and receive audio on this same network in in this example, the Dante card's IP address is 10.0.1.29, and the two of those should not bother each other at all. So the app has installed, and opening it shows that the console has already been discovered, which is pretty impressive. Coming from other popular apps where you have to enter the MAC address and configure the console prior to discovery, skipping that on the software side here is a nice change. You can see that the IP address I mentioned earlier, that 10.0.1.31, is being shown here, along with the firmware displayed and the unique console name. And you can select that to get started. There are five main tabs that we need to be concerned with here on the app, and those are performance setup, control and metering, personal monitoring, front of house, and we've already been to network. Now, while you're in the app, you can navigate back to network by clicking the little Wi-Fi icon up here in the top, but when you first select the console, you're going to be launched into performance setup. This is the place to quickly configure sources and channels and outputs as well as the talkback section of the console. This is where you'd want to start when setting up the console from scratch, starting from a saved profile on a new gig where you need to add some stuff, or for an A2 or other member of your crew to work on prepping the next act while you're busy mixing on the desk itself. If you are an A2, check out my previous video I'll link below about setting up an iPad mini with the case that I have here and a clip so you can be even faster around the stage. This section allows you to name, color code, tag, choose icons, group, and patch sources, and channels. For channels, you can assign routing for both main and alternate sources for each channel. You can configure how each source is used, whether it's going to be mono, stereo, or mid-side. And you can adjust the pan and width at the channel level, the solo bus that it contributes to, as well as any sends that that channel is contributing to. Under sources, we can see what outputs that source might be patched to directly, and that's a really handy thing as well. Under the outputs tab, again, we have the ability to patch things and route things, as well as patching sources directly to outputs and patching the outputs of the SD card recorders individually. The talkback section gives you control of talkback A and B. You can source either of those from channel 40 or auxiliary 8. Uh, we've got button modes that can be either push to talk or latching. We've got auto dim for the monitor send, bus dim so we can uh, duck things when announcements are made, and either of those can be assigned out to any of the buses as well as mains 1, 2, 3, or 4. That's pretty comprehensive for a talkback. So we've labeled some channels, routed some things where they need to go. Now we can move over to the control and metering section to see if things are getting where they need to be. We've got four tabs here and they're pretty straightforward. Again, channel meters is a really good place to see what's active on all of your mix channels at any time. You've got channels one through 40, your auxiliaries, bus one through eight, nine through 16, mains one through four, 
Matrix 1 through 8, and of course your DCAs 1 through 16 all get stereo metering here. So this is a really good place to have a look and see exactly what's happening at any given moment. As we move across, we have our source meters where you can actually take a look at the signals as they arrive at the console. And this can be really good uh, if you're having an issue at the channel level that isn't making sense. You can back up a level to the sources as they get to the console and you can take a look at any one of these components here, the AES, the USB, uh, Stage Connect, uh, the expansion cards, whatever else you've got going on there and see it right from the source as it gets to the console. Uh, out meters, same thing. You've got a various section here that kind of gives you a little bit of an overview of a variety of things that you'll commonly use. But then you can jump into any one of these components again and see the output right as the signal leaves the console. So this is a really good place to do some troubleshooting if you think you've got things patched, but you're losing your signal somewhere along the line. Now the last tab is a really handy one, and that's the RTA. And you can pop into the RTA, you'll see what the source is right now that's active and I've got microphone number one active and if I come over here to the source request I can go in and request a channel and I'll request my oscillator there and that'll pick up right there. Now a lot of times when you need to use an RTA, something like a quiet lav mic or a quiet source that you're really struggling to figure out what's going on, uh, a really handy thing that they've included here is RTA gain. So you can gain that up to get the RTA results into your window uh, and be able to work with that data. So that's really handy to have and very simple to set up. They've also included down the bottom here, you can see there's a little keyboard illustration and that lights up with whatever frequency is peaking currently, uh, right above where you see the frequency label. So you'll be able to do a little bit of ear training with that if that's something you're interested in. You can take a look at the note that's actually feeding back along with the frequency and that's always nice to associate those two. The next section is an important one and that is personal monitoring. And this gives you the ability to work with one bus at a time. You can choose that bus up here, but first we need to unlock it. Then you can tap in, choose which is going to be your target bus for this mix you're going to create. We'll go ahead and choose say mix 11. And now you have access here to all of your source channels and your auxiliaries. If we come back down to say bus one, we'll have the ability to actually feed a bus into a bus if we needed to do that. So there's some different configuration here on how these different outputs work. But generally speaking, you'll be able to use this section here to work on one mix at a time. So if you've got this set up to be a monitor mix, this would be where you could quickly uh, make adjustments to any channel that's feeding that mix. You get channel labels, you get icons, you get pan and width control, and you can make those adjustments very easily from this level right here. Now, if that's still a little bit too granular, you don't want to have all of the faders, say, uh, active for this one mix at a time. You just need to make some kind of course adjustments. We can go over to MCA, and that stands for Mix Control Association. Here we have four of them that can be assigned to control any number of contributing channels, just like a DCA, allowing a musician to group many inputs into four logical faders that are much easier to make Make adjustments with on the fly. You can always go back to the mixer from here though and make some fine adjustments uh, and fine tune those relationships as needed. Now we're moving on to the front of house section here in our mixer and this is going to look very familiar if you're used to working on the wing although some things like you'll notice here are mirrored a little bit. Normally these controls would be down the left hand side on the wing screen and the reason for that is so you can grab it easily with two hands. You don't have to sit there and poke at things with just one finger. You can use this hand to select what's going on on this side of the screen and they've given us some tools for this thumb as well. Down the left side, we can select what we want to look at, whether that's channels, mixes, DCAs, and mute groups. There's also a toggle between mute and solo for these uh, buttons down here below the channel. So I can toggle that and then activate a solo or a mute. And then I've also got a clear solo that flashes nicely to let me know that I do have something soloed. So really handy, especially if you're mixing with this uh, remotely and you're using some in-ears and you actually are using that solo bus. Selecting a channel gives us the familiar view that we are used to seeing on the actual console. You can navigate to the section you need by choosing from the right hand side tools here. And again, they're very, very similar from the console. They're pretty much exactly what you would expect to see. 
And as we go down, you'll be able to see that you can also choose some of the more advanced things. So if you want to choose something different in place of the gate, you can absolutely do that there. You can choose different EQ models and you can work with those uh, right here from the app. So that's really nice. You don't have to go back to the console, for instance, if you wanted to insert a special type of effects unit uh, or make a change like that on the fly. So that's really useful if you're using a lot of uh, non-standard or some of the more premium plugins and you want to have control of them from the app as well. Some apps don't allow so much of that when you get into the virtual racks and all of the plugins, you have to go back to the console. So this makes it feel like you're pretty much right at the console. And I can imagine on a much bigger iPad, this again is an iPad mini four. If you had an iPad pro, I can imagine this being really, really fun to work on. You get all the usual routing to the mains and different subgroups here at the channel level as well. You get all the insert points. So you've got every opportunity to work with the audio just like you would on the big console. It is important to note that if you wanna access the rest of these uh, buses, you just, scroll over and you'll get to all 16 of them. And then also if you are actually working on a bus, you'll see if I scroll over, here's matrix one, two, three, four, and so on down to eight. So you have access to those from there as well. So very powerful if you're doing routing or any sort of uh, readjusting mixes on the fly, uh, you'll be able to access everything here. Again, you don't have to go all the way back to the console to get to that stuff. So that's really it for the layout and big features in the Copilot app right now. I'm sure there'll be a lot of folks with questions and suggestions based on your own experience, and I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. If you've been using a wing yourself and have experience with the app, let us know if I've missed anything important. As we get updates in the future, we will definitely come back to the app and check those out. Thanks for watching. It would mean a lot if you hit the like button and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time.